Okay, our next uh, speakers, <coughs> speakers of the evening. We have a new speaker <laughs> with us <laughs> as well is uh, Jennifer Bihele and Harald Broch Brochaska, right? And I want to introduce you to it, guys. Uh, they're part of the research group media creation at the FH St. Pölten. Pardon my pronunciation. <laughs> And their field of research includes uh, television and animation, 360 video, game design, and transmedia storytelling. And they will be sharing with us uh, one of the group's projects, an alternate reality game aimed to enhance media literacy and learning through game playing. Let's welcome next speakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hi. Hello to everyone and thanks for having us and thanks for the great and nice introduction. Yeah, We are from the University of Applied Sciences in St. Pölten and we are from the ICMT. Um, in words, uh, Institute for Media, Creative and Technology. Um, and we are today we are talking about uh, alternate reality game we did uh, last year. So, yes, that's basica basically the, um, the main topic of, of our thing. Yeah, what we do uh, in detail is we are from the... Uh, the ICMT is split up in several research groups and we are the research, research group media creation. So um, we are researching in the field of digital media because it's spreading out in all our lives and it's influencing as we all know it's influencing all our, our behaviors and our thoughts and the way we 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 uh, we, li we live in, in in the digital world so that sounds pretty interesting and it, it is as we researcher i can say it's quite interesting to analyze how we we live with digital media and as research of the media creation team we are developing and yeah we devel develop uh, formats we're working with the with new te technology and we try to to discuss things like uh, 360 or vr and and tell stories with it so, yeah, and in this particular pro uh, project and this alternate reality game, it's called Tracks Transmedia Extension. Um, uh, we work in a group of two uh, 21 people, um, uh, researchers, lecturers, and assistants. And we started one year ago with um, with writing concepts. <laughs> um, scripting stories and um, the, the main goal was to 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 build us uh, to to start with uh, a novel uh, from written from uh, Rosemarie Eichinger and transform it into a transmedia event or experience and we chose alternate reali reality games as the perfect setting to to make to make the story uh, adventure and yeah now I will hand over to Jennifer because she will tell you exactly what that means um, hello yeah uh, so our aim was to uh, examine transmedia storytelling in children's media um, and sadly books very often are equated as boring and people um, think about it as an uh, unsatisfying learning experience. So we thought about what can we do to make it more fun again? How can we engage uh, our audience? And in our, in our case, the audience is uh, our students in the age of 10 to 12, 10 to 12 years. Uh, how can we engage them and make reading more fun? And um, as you said before, alternate reality game was the solution for our purposes. So um, 
because um, an alternate reality game um, promotes active learning and the players have to, rec um, have to work together. They have to be constantly engaged in their activities, uh, solving puzzles and collaborating on complex tasks. And uh, while they're doing that, they get to become the creator of the media instead of just seeing it. So they have to do something and get active. And um, so, here you get a little insight on our alternate reality game. As you said before, we were working about a year on it. Uh, and the production started in October and we are just about to finish it. And we will have our first test run in April in a school in Vienna with a class of students at uh, the age of 12, I think. So we're really excited and uh, looking forward to try it out. If everything we worked for will work out uh, or, or not, we will see. So yeah. Um, Usually, alternate reality games, uh, well, it is common that people don't know that they are playing a game. And we tried this classic approach, approach as well uh, in our story. So our players do not know that they actually uh, play a game uh, at the beginning. Later, they will realize it, of course. But uh, in the beginning, they just think they take part, pa uh, they take part in a creative um, assignment. So they think uh, the first prize of winning this competition that they're entering together with the school class is to win the visit of a pig, a tamed pig that is owned by an elderly person. And uh, what they are not know is that they actually um, communicate with fictive characters from the book. Uh, and um, yeah, um, when they're waiting on the pig, because of course they're winning the first prize and the pig will be delivered to the class so they can visit it. Uh, yeah, um, while they are waiting, uh, the pigs get, uh, the pig gets uh, hijacked, uh, kidnapped, uh, and the hell breaks loose. And uh, meanwhile, there are several attacks. Uh, the website of the organizers get uh, hacked. And uh, um, um, yeah, so they get increasingly sucked into this story if they want or not. And uh, the organizers seek help uh, from the uh, players, um, and there is an evil villain that, scatter, uh, that, uh, that um, scatters information, so they have, solved have, solved to, uh, have to solve puzzles in order to uh, capture this evil uh, guy and to save the pig. So a uh, classic dramatic approach in game design. And uh, yeah, here just um, again, uh, what were our objectives when developing the game? Of course, we wanted to examine the boundaries of transmedia storytelling and also enhance media literacy. But really, the most important thing for us was to, ha to have fun and to make learning fun again. So, um, well, uh, transmedia, well, we were actually focusing a lot on the story and the narrative. Although we use a bunch of media, as you can see, the players have to uh, undertake a lot of, uh, <laughs> uh, they have to do a lot of things during the three-day gameplay. But uh, that was not our main focus. Our main focus was to, uh, to examine how a story can be told through different medias and to deliver a convincing story that's in that is engaging and that brings uh, an exciting experience to the players. Um, and uh, also to keep a balance between story and gaming and participation. Um, for, that, uh, for that purpose, we uh, tried to have a structure, a dramatic structure, that something that pulls and pushes the experience along. And uh, so to give them uh, a purpose um, and to have them emotionally engaged in the story, because otherwise, why would they care? Why should they be motivated to go on a quest? So uh, we uh, introduced an evil uh, villain that uh, sends them a video message and somehow makes the uh, players partially responsible for the kidnapping of the pig. And I hope we can, well, he has a message. This is the message the players will receive. Do we have audio? Ich will spielen! <lacht> Nicht übel. Gestern habt ihr mich doch fast erwischt. Aber eben nur fast. Es hat richtig Spaß gemacht, euch dabei zuzusehen, wie dem armen, unwissenden Malz wieder mal alles in die Schuhe geschoben wird. <lacht> das zeigt, dass ihr einfach überhaupt keine Ahnung habt, mit wem ihr es eigentlich zu tun habt. Aber ich weiß, was ihr in jedem Sommer getan habt. Und dafür werdet ihr alle büßen. Habt ihr echt geglaubt, dass, oh, no. dass ich euch das durchgehen lasse? 
<lacht> da habt ihr euch aber gründlich getäuscht. Ihr tappt im Dunkeln und das wird auch lange noch so bleiben. Jetzt muss ich mir nur noch überlegen, was ich mit Penelope mache. Die wird doch sicherlich einen guten Schweinsbraten abgeben. Was meint ihr? <lacht> ihr könnt euer Glück ruhig noch eine Weile versuchen. Ihr findet sie nie. Weil ihr nicht die geringste Ahnung habt, mit wem ihr es eigentlich zu tun habt, oder? <lacht> Um, so actually, our players, they have to solve a crime and while they are checking for alibis and uh, f trying to find evidence on different media platforms, it means making research in blogs, finding uh, real newspaper clippings, analog finds, uh, handwritten notes, uh, they use social media a lot, they have WhatsApp, they, uh, they enter virtual reality rooms or 360 videos to find hidden uh, clues uh, to, get a, to process further in the story. We have a problem because our scene of crime is actually uh, in a fictional world and our players, they are constrained and they are locally based in a school. So this way, uh, virtual reality uh, gave us a great potential uh, in our storytelling because we could send our players right into where we wanted them to have, uh, wanted them to be. So under the false pretext that a non-player character uh, placed some 360 cameras in um, residential building apartments, uh, they had the chance to uh, enter those rooms and explore them uh, in their own pace, find uh, hidden treasures and informations and uh, um, explore this new technology in a, in a very safe environment. So um, I will show you an example how this might, how this looks. So um, we try to keep it pretty simple because there were, of course, a lot of restraints that we had to keep in mind. Uh, one, for sure, there, were, uh, the, um, there could be nausea or a cyber sickness. So we tried to uh, base every decision uh, around the device that we were going to use. Um, uh, so in terms of navigation and movement, we try to keep it really simple. So they have a 360 view, but they can only navigate through the eye gaze. And uh, also we tried to keep the limit, uh, keep the play session to a minimum of a very a few minutes. And uh, yeah, so so um, yeah. And also we tried to not uh, approach an ultra realistic look because uh, our, our main idea was actually to create a sense of pe uh, presence uh, that adds to the story, and that is enough for us. So. 
here uh, some imagery is from the asset creation. Uh, I won't talk about too much that because we're running out of time, but actually our post-production and virtual reality creation team is here tonight. And if you have any, con uh, any questions on how we tackle the technical side and the workflow, uh, they're here and they're happy to answer all your questions. Uh, what, uh, what I can just say, what is very important, the lessons we learned so far in virtual reality were just stay within the budget of your frame rate, um, know the limits of your cardboard uh, VR. In our case, it was EOS and uh, it was uh, generation 5S and it was pretty challenging, but the reason for that is just because we had uh, so many iPhones laying around, so that was the reason why we, we did not choose Android. And also model intentionally and test as early as often. And um, yeah, and now I hand over to my colleague because he was uh, in charge of the 360 video production and he can tell you everything about that now. Thank you. Hopefully. Um, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, quite similar to the thoughts about the VR room, we tried to, uh, to make these scenes and places accessible for the, the children who play the game. So we thought about how we can make it and we ended up in producing 360 video because it started one or two years ago, th 360 vi uh, degrees videos um, are quite affordable, the, the technical uh, opportunities are there and so we thought, oh, let's, let's do it. And we started thinking about how to to create the setup and how to tell uh, how the story ha have to be told in in this kind of setup because it's one one room uh, you can turn around and there has to be a story or uh, a, uh, yeah a story told um, to 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 make it interesting so um, yeah so we started from scratch from from scratch in October last year we bought some cameras, we bought the software, we tested it once and it looked okay. <laughs> and, uh, and so we started uh, writing a story. And we, uh, we um, what you have to know is um, they, the children have to go in a room and find some hidden numbers in the room because it's part of the, of the riddle and they have to collect these numbers and, and find a code and we used the character, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, a room full of clocks and we used the character, the postman, who is quite uninteresting in the, in the movie but his, his role is to, to, went from, or to go from one, uh, from one uh, hidden number to the next. So uh, during the time you look the video, you have to to find all the hidden numbers because in the end he he went to all the numbers and placed something there and did something there because it's it's very important in a alternate reality game to 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 that the the children find the numbers and and have some success <coughs> because otherwise they will quit and go home and then shit <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. So let's have a look at the room. Um, we are inspired by the Google Cardboard. So we designed the room in a cardboard look. Actually, it was way more work to build the room <laughs> as to uh, shoot the, the movie. As you can see, it's quite hard to, to read the numbers because we weren't sure about the size and we, yes, we tried it. So here you can see the first hint. It goes to the first clock. Du, wir müssen noch eine Unterschrift für euch, für die Backerlein sammeln. Ja, du, ich stehe gerade am Herd, ich koche gerade, kommt rein. Ja, passt, mach gern. Riecht eh schon super. Okay, 
that you have to follow him and you fall something down and it goes on and on. Yeah, but that's the, the definitely uh, there's uh, way more about telling stories in a 360 room, but it's it was our first project and our first um, yeah, try and we are pretty impressed of what's it's, it's possible and um, we, we try to continue uh, writing stories for a 360 room and I'm sure um, that it's it's in the future it's possible to edit in 360 room to to stitch different stories into one 360 room and there's so many things uh, which are possible in the future and it's just the beginning and it's gonna be great <laughs> yeah some lessons learned as you can see yeah uh, um, whoever did some uh, shooting with GoPro knows the issues <laughs> yeah but I think all the things if you are aware of it you can fix it yeah in the end the most important chart thanks to all who are involved and we start testing our alternate reality game next month and we are very excited of course <laughs> because it was a year of work and we are sure it will be fun and you can try it out at the Lange Nacht der Forschung in Niederösterreich at the University for Applied Science yeah thanks for watching us <laughs> And feel free to ask. Um, so now we open the Q&A for this. Okay, so second. <laughs> um, so I understand one of your well, your major object objectives is to create a learning system that is interactive and fun for the kids. Could, so could you explain a bit more about what the kids are actually learning um, through the system? Well, actually, they're learning quite a bit because they have to collect data. They have to uh, they do their own research. And actually, we built a huge environment with lots of information, many more information and side stories than they're actually necessary for the game. So what they have is have to do is to go into this, for example, website where you have hundreds of articles and newspaper clippings, etc., and estimate what is important for me, what is not. So they have to have to they have to follow decisions. Also, they have to work collaboratively, and so. Um, you know the principle of collective intelligence that's a huge thing in alternate reality games so we would like to promote these things and enhance this even further because we uh, we separate the people in group uh, the players in different groups so everyone has an in, uh, individual learning experience but they can also share the things they learn where uh, while they are searching for clues uh, with each other. Actually, they have to because otherwise they cannot uh, process further along. For example, at the video, they will uh, solve a puzzle. So they have uh, to find the right uh, amount of numbers and the correct kind um, uh, yeah. And <laughs> but uh, this uh, they have to do in more videos and in more environments. And then they have to put all these things together. And uh, also they have to uh, they have to um, they have to uh, decipher uh, notes uh, that are written in Morse code and. Um, they have to, well, and we will enhance media literacy, so that means they have to use a lot of new technology. Actually, they have to build their own guard boards. They will learn how to do it. So we will give them not pre-made guard boards. They will have to do it themselves. And uh, we will just give them the information where they can find it in the internet, where they can print it out, and oh, the, the teacher, oh, all of a sudden she has some cardboard laying around and some scissors, and we have an hour of time. So they will build a cardboard, and then they get a, a, a message from one of the fictional characters, and he, uh, well, he, just as, the, uh, just as it is, he has just placed some cameras, so there is the great opportunity to go inside, check the alibis, because he has no time to do it. So please, can you help? So I think they will learn a lot. And 
Um, but the thing is, it's not learning actually uh, like like in school. It's more like l yeah, discover new things and, and try out new things and just have fun. And while you're having fun, your uh, all these sensory things that it 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 it, it tackles your brain because actually. Um, are you aware with uh, Edgar Day's um, corner of, of learning? 10% um, what you're reading after two weeks probably, no, ten what, you're, what you're hearing. 10% what you're hearing after two weeks probably you will have forgotten. 20% that you're reading you might remember, but what you're doing, 90% of that stays in your brain because you really did it and you simulated it. So what you're doing stays in your memory longer and therefore, yeah, multisensory. Game-based learning is actually a good answer for, 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 yeah, good approach in my opinion. I hope so. So, for what age um, is your game? Ten to twelve. Ten to twelve. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, I have a rather technical question. So as far as I understood, you make the people getting or the children getting engaged yeah, by navigational cues with uh, gaze uh, navigation, right? Yeah. And did you also make them getting engaged uh, with the objects which they could highlight? Because I saw in the video you can highlight things, but how do you get like more information of what you see? Or can you also touch it? Or did you... Did you integrate any kind of interaction metaphors or something like this? Some of those objects have numbers or a uh, riddle. So that, that is just the challenge was more, 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 uh, more here. So, uh, but also the objects, um, because all of these uh, rooms they're visiting, actually those are characters from the book and those are very, uh, um, they're very strongly shaped characters, like the triplets. These are uh, 85 year old triplets all living together uh, since the World War. And, uh, and the, the, the Gothics, we, we've seen the room before, they're having a cake factory, but they are Goths and actually nice people. And all these people, if you read the book, you, you get sucked into the cosmos in the story world. And all, uh, all these rooms we're visiting, there are very, very much references uh, on, on, on their characters and their behavior and, uh, and so to convince uh, the kids that it's actually almost real and um, yeah yeah and you can get in touch with the people you can d discuss things with th with some of them via whatsapp or something like that so the people or the yeah the people of the book become really real so yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we just built an extensional world around the book and um, you can explore it in further, yeah. Um, what's the quality of your, <laughs> <laughs> your 360-degree video? It's 2K. Uh, it's on YouTube. We we use the cardboard app, so the the it's 2K. Just possible. It's just possible in 2K, and it's H.264 codec. So yeah, that's it. But it's it's a shot with uh, six GoPros, so it's the resolution overall. But YouTube don't allows more than 2K at the moment. But Um, as far as I understand it, you are a research group, so this is also a research project, right? Um, do you have any clients or companies who are interested in the stuff you do, which is fantastic, I think? Uh, I want to try it now, um, okay? Um, because the question, I'm, I'm coming from the film business, so I'm not so into the whole technical stuff, so I'm interested in it. And the question always is, how do you finance it in the real world? <laughs> Do you have any experiences with that? Do you have companies that sponsor you or, yeah? Um, one of our partners is uh, the Jungbrunnen Brunnen Verlag. So it's interesting for Verlage um, who sells books. 
because it's a, a great marketing opportunity. Um, that's one thing, and it's yeah, it's very important, <laughs> uh, uh, and it's uh, uh, very important to to spend a lot of money in it because <laughs> um, yeah. You have to foc you, you can't focus on just one media. You have to to plan all the different kinds of media, and that's what make it so so expensive. Yeah, um, actually, we were funded by the FFG, um, so it is a kind it's quite huge funding, uh, and um, our corporations are. The Austrian Institute of Media Economics, the University of Vienna, our research group, as also University of Applied Sciences, and uh, of course the publisher Jungbrunnen Verlag, and the author Rosemary Eichinger, who actually has a lot of books in at Amazon. So she was very interested. Also, she, she actually wrote this book just for the Transmedia Project when we decided to do it as an alternate reality game. So she had it already in mind uh, to. So, yeah. But yeah, if can we tell numbers? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe later when you ask me. Yeah. So we have time for one more question. Hey, I'm a teacher. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I was just wondering. I really love the project and I really love the approach. Um, I was just wondering, like, how much is the setup? Like, how much time do you need for it? Because as when I prepare a lesson, I maybe have like one hour when I'm like really well prepared to prepare something because everything else is just like not possible. So how much does it really take to set up the whole thing? And is it really possible for a normal teacher to set it up for a three day project? Or is there always someone <laughs> like you two and helping me? So at the moment, it's uh, we do tests. So yes, there will always be someone of us with the project so um and it will take i think about two or three hours to set up am i right yeah it depends of course uh. you have meetings you have to get the signature of all the parents because yeah. we have to clear first we have to really we have to find out if there's anyone that is epileptic in the class or if we have any eyesight problems or other 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 things uh, like like religious concerns etc so these things have to be cleared out or we won't play the game with this class or they have to send the, the kid in another class while they're playing it i don't know how they will this will be handled but <laughs> yeah but 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 we need written signature from all the parents and they have to be uh, the, um, uh, informed that there might be nausea or motion sickness or, uh, or something like this. So um, I don't think it will be a big risk because we try to prevent everything and it's a really, really short time there in VR, but we have to, we have to, have, have to be on the safe side here. And yeah, um, at the moment we don't know how long this preparation will take, but we would love to make a second project where we bring it to the to where we can um, develop it further so it could be on the market one day that that is the second step but at the moment it's just a meeting with us and we will discuss what's what what's the role of the teacher is in the project and y because that's a ver very important role and that will take about one or two hours and then we are ready to to play yeah. but for all the event triggers, actually, there's a uh, there is a there is a um, content management system be running behind. So you know when you have to post something. So you know when when something some action has to take place. And if it's not taking place, what you have to do to uh, um, to crack it or, or how when to get active. So yeah, you have to be the puppet master. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, David Harold. <laughs>